allowing us to be in your holy presence you. this morning. And so, Lord, as we just come before your presence, entering into your thorn, thorn of grace, we just thank you for allowing us to be here. Thank you for bringing your presence in this holy place, oh God. Let your word go forth, O oh Lord, and illuminate the hearts of those who have an ear to hear. And we just thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for everything you do is good. We praise you because you're the true and living God. You're the only God. You're the God Almighty, the true and living Yahweh. We love you and thank you for this day. Chris. Yes, today is the fifth, right? Yeah. It's the sixth. Today is the sixth. Oh. It's a Sunday, Sunday the sixth. But um, I'm pretty sure there's a lot it's, of you. Excuse me, it's the seventh. <laughs> yeah, so by it being the seventh, that's closer to the eighth. And I know a lot of you have heard uh, rumors of... Uh, the clips, you know, that there's people that's pushing it out there to make it seem more than a, just a simple eclipse like we have every year. You know, if you guys think about it, when the eclipse happened, everybody just get their dark glasses and they get in groups, they go out, they watch the eclipse. What a wonder, you know? But this year, for some reason, it's been hyped up, you know, to be where it's a sign of some sort. And, and it, it can only start from just one mouth, one person to say, oh, this is the sign of this because it's, the shadow is falling on this and that and that. You know, I didn't really look at a lot of reports on what they were saying why this eclipse was gonna be a sign of the Lord to do something, you know, um, I don't know. A lot of you who are watching this, you mo you know more than I know. I don't even know. But I do know there was a, a brother, his uh, ministry is named Sling a Stone. Through his ministry that we follow a lot, they keep up with Bible prophecy, and he said that NASA, they're going to be getting involved on um, the 8th tomorrow, shooting rockets up there, testing something out since it's, everything will go dark. It's kind of weird, you know, I'm wondering why are they shooting rockets up there, for one. Two, um... They're supposed to be, uh, I don't know if you guys heard of the Particle Collider in CERN, Switzerland. Um, I put something on my page early on. I didn't keep doing that because, you know, I, I don't want people thinking I didn't went cuckoo. But if you all know about that, you just know, but there's people who don't know. But there is a collider they put underground it's really big it goes from city to city and they send particles one way and particles the other way and they smash them together but it's supposed to be an experiment to replicate uh the big bang theory they said you know that's how they believe all of this came to be was through a big bang experience so they re made a, a machine to recreate that event but I know you, you can't believe everything that they tell you that's what they're telling us and they found this particle and they call it the God particle because it, it, it's something outside of this <clears throat> world you know and it's just it, it's just amazing <clears throat> what scientists are doing today um when they discover a little bit, they just keep trying to go deeper and deeper and deeper. You know, they clone things and they just won't put it to rest. They won't be satisfied. They'll just keep on going till they honestly destroy themselves. I, I just got to say it. That's, man is known for that. Man 
will destroy himself. You know, here, what was that movie we saw? Oppenheimer, some, I, yes. I don't know if I said his name right. Oppenheimer, that's the guy, him and Einstein got together. <clears throat> and here, that, what was it? What bomb was that? The hydrogen atom, bomb? Atom bomb. It was either the atom, hydrogen, it was the big one. Atom bomb. The it was atom the bomb, bomb that was used in World War II. Yeah, and you see, in the movie, it showed where Einstein was kind of regretting it, or both of them was wondering, did we do the right thing to come up with this? And the answer is no. I mean, for them to even have that thought of should I done this, that tells you they shouldn't have, you know? And you know if one person get it, some more people going to get it too. And it's it's just, we're going to destroy ourselves. And I think in the movie they had like, where somebody was looking at the water and you know how you can throw a rock in the water and it'll make those ripple effects. It'll, mm -hmm. it'll make the waves from that splash. Well, if you throw another rock in there, it's going to do the same thing. And then that coming together of the ripples just showed total total devastation to the entire planet, God's planet. Now there's a scripture, Don, let me see if I can pull up. Um, the, the, I think I put that one Bible in, yeah. We're gonna find it together. There's a scripture where it says, God is coming to destroy them that's destroying the earth. Let me find that one. Destroy Earth. I'm just typing this in the um, concordance here. And I know it's, uh, it's one in Revelations, but. Now, I put destroying, but I believe it's destroy. There it is, Revelations, chapter 11, verses 18. I'm going to start at 17. Eh. 16. And the four and twenty elders, which means 24 elders, 12 and 12, sat before God on their seats, and fell upon their faces and worshiped God, saying, We give you thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which are and was and which are to come, because you have taken to you your great power and have reigned. And the nations were angry, and your wrath is come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged and that you shouldest give reward unto your servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and to them that fear your name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. Isn't that something, Don? Mm -hmm. So it's right here in the word where it shows there will be a group of people, individuals that's destroying the earth. And it, it's amazing here. Um, it says the nations were angry. Isn't that something? Mm -hmm. It's like the Lord, he's waiting. You know, there's a, a, a tipping point and it seems like it reached it to where he he's he's waiting to see what what we're going to do. He already knows what we're going to do, but it says the nations were angry and your wrath has come. I mean, you got to ask yourself, why are they angry? Why are people angry? I mean, part of the reason the, the Lord showed me is people don't want his way. They 
people want to do what they want to do when they want to do it. You know, let's just keep it real. It's hard for us to just follow the law of another. Like, look at the laws of the land. We all break it. Me and Don, even, we speed at times. You know, I'm not going to sit here like I'm innocent and don't do nothing wrong. You know, we, we're running late when we should have prioritized our time and, and we didn't and we're trying to get to work on time you know look at the system that we live under and we all know if, if, if we're late so many times for work it, it counts against us so what do we do we press the gas a little bit more and even even the uh, biggest name minister out there whoever you know you you want to think is so tip top he don't do nothing wrong or she don't do nothing wrong. They even will speed or break the law some kind of way. You know what I mean? But yet the law is still there. And if we get pulled over and the cops say, hey, I clocked you, we can't argue with them. We just admit to it. Don't sit there and lie to the cop. He And, and you know you were speeding. You know what I mean? So just accept it. But the reason I'm saying that is because the same way man has laws, God has laws. And I tell people, why, why should you who refute God be mad at God when man has rules, man has laws, and we follow them? Like, like that, I, I would say, look at that red light. Look at the stoplight out there. We know if you run that red light, even if nothing's coming, you know, you you broke the law. And if the cops see you, he's he's gonna give you a ticket. But if if a car is coming, trucks are coming, and you run that light, you're gonna die. You know, you could get into a collision and be killed. So the law is there for a reason, and God has His um, laws in place for a reason. And we know that there was a fall in heaven. You know, there was, it wasn't necessarily an overthrow where th this uh, high ranking angel got to do anything. He was only thinking about it. He was plotting in, within himself. I guess he didn't know the most high was that powerful to know his thoughts, you know, or he wouldn't even went there. You know, and even if he knew he was thinking it, you know, why would you? Why would you even not be content with what you have and and stay in your place, stay in your rank? You know, this is what you were created to do. Just do what you were made to do. But, you know, God didn't make him to be that way. That's his choice. Just like the first murder that was recorded, Cain and, and you know, kill Abel. Cain chose to do that. God even counseled him before he committed it, committed the, the murder. He counseled him and he said, sin is crouched at the door, you know, and, and what's going on in you? You got to do something about that, lest it take take you over. And he, he didn't take his counsel and so... He went along with that thought to just I'm gonna I'm gonna hurt him I'm gonna kill him I'm gonna end my brother's life and he will be no more you know isn't that something that darkness took over his heart like that not to there where was the love you know God is love he was he pushed God away he pushed the source of love away and gave place to darkness through his emotions, you know, it came out of emotion. That's why we got to be careful with all of our emotions. We can't be in our emotions. You know, it can lead to to a dark place in penalties. Now, back to the April, uh, tomorrow, April the 8th. April. Now, there has been times where men have hyped up a thing, like I'm a, for an example, uh, 2000, the year 2000, Y2K, remember that? Mm -hmm. This guy, he was putting out these books and and just 
hyping it all up. Remember that, Don? You remember? I remember. This guy made a lot of money from those books, and we were all, everybody was locked in. They was locked in. It was said to stock your cabinets. Yeah. And, you know, be prepared to be. You know, um, for this thing. I think they thought the rapture was coming, and so be prepared. And if you don't go, you need this and that and that. <laughs> And a lot of people, including the church, bought into it. Go yeah, ahead, and, and, and if I could play back a video, like right now, I could play a little clip and say, watch this clip and show you all this man and his intensity, and he was on talk shows, and people was just, so you're saying this and this, and he, yeah, he was so convinced and had us convinced. So that's kind of, let's just say that's what's going on right now, <coughs> right? Mm -hmm. But the thing is, people say, well, what if something do happen? But like I was telling my wife earlier, we, we supposed to, all of us supposed to be ready at any time of the day. Because, you know, we're driving on dangerous roads next to these heavy machinery on wheels. You know, anything could happen. Anything could happen, you know. And we're to be ready at any time of the day. Even now, you know, it, something can happen in your sleep. You know, it's like, why wait till something is pronounced like, oh, it's going to be intimate, intimate, in, you know, intimate doom. You know, like they said, the three days of darkness thing is going to take place. And there are some rules in place in order to escape it. It was it was said that you would even have to have beeswax candles is what I was told. That's what you know. Why I just can't go get these Walmart candles? No, it's got to be beeswax candles. If you didn't know that, back. No, I didn't. so yeah. So you see what I mean? It's like and everybody can't just run and get no beeswax candles. Somebody gonna be like, well, this is just gonna have to do. And what if I don't have beeswax candles? Am I? done for you know is the thing outside gonna enter in whatever they're talking about I kinda don't wanna take it all in it's better not to take that in just like this uh, this eclipse thing they're talking but I did notice uh, from my brother um, that has the channel uh, Sling a Stone I don't I don't even know his his name the young man, but he he showed that NASA's getting involved. They're going to, going to send up a few rockets, you know, around the time where it, it totally gets dark to test something. Uh, CERN, they're going to fire up the particle collider. Uh, and there's one more. I know the National Guard supposed to be doing something. They're posted up in the different states that it's going to actually affect. Yeah, and they're posted up. But they're, they're making this thing really big. And on top of that, here we had an earthquake. I think it was 4.8. In New York and New Jersey. Yeah, I don't know all the places it it, it hit. But if, if you ask our brother Jonathan uh, Kahn, he, he has a, a book and... Uh, the harbinger, the harbinger, and basically saying different people that's in our time represent people of old, and it he is very convincing the things that he's saying, and I'm like, wow, what's the odds of that? You know, this person equaling to be that person, you know, and he 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 said because of the sins of America, that's why where the covenant was made, he was saying through our forefathers where America was built because the breaking of that covenant you know that's why the monument was cracked here and all that good stuff I mean if you all are watching Jonathan Kahn but he will if, if, if you watch him and he tell you why New York you know it's something centered around New York because that's where the covenant was made but the fellow that uh that's over Sling a Stone Ministry. He said that they're going on a 24-hour fast for the eighth. 
and and the, so it would be like Nineveh. If you all know the the Bible, you heard of Jonah. You know, got swallowed by a large uh, fish or sea creature or whatever. I don't want to say it was a whale, but he was he was um, consumed by a large sea creature of some sort. Because he didn't want to go to Nineveh so they would hear the word of God and repent. He wanted to see God just overthrow that place, you know. But through his disobedience, bad stuff kept happening. You know, he was on this ship. They got trouble. They were very superstitious back then. They was casting lots. The lots fell on him. And they was like, who are you? And pray to your God. Why are you not praying? <laughs> you know. And he told them the truth. They threw him overboard. And the sea got calm. Like he said it would get. If they was to throw him over. And here. In the fish's belly. I don't know how deep the fish went. Into the waters. But. He cried out and the Lord heard him and caused the fish to vomit him up on land right where he was supposed to go. And so he he went and told the people that God is going to destroy this place. He, he obeyed God, but look what he had to go through for him to obey God. But the people believed him. You know, imagine if they had a mocked him and said, ah, <laughs> you know, like they did with Noah when he was building a ship on dry land and they mocked him a hundred years. Not one person joined him, you know. But here in Nineveh, everybody repented in sackcloth, you know, from the least to the greatest and God did not destroy that place. So my brother who's over Sling of Stone, he, he wants everybody to go on a 24 hour fast and hopes God will spare America because of the atrocities America has done. And yes, America has done some things behind the scene that a lot of you know common people just don't know about what America has done. But it all falls under that law that is called sowing and reaping. You know, uh, karma is what some people call it. Karma, that you're gonna reap what you sow. You know, it may not happen right then, but as time progresses, what you what you did will catch up with you. That's just the way it is. The wages of sin equals death. Sin pays money and is stacking up and it's time, you know, it's time to pay up. Now, we don't know. We don't know what's coming. We don't know what's going to happen. Me and Don, personally, we're not here to say the Lord showed me this, the Lord showed me that. We're not prophesying. No, we're not prophesying. Go but ahead. I do want to add that um, when Chris was saying that America has done things. Now, there's things we don't know that the government has done in these different countries to uh, other people, um, not keeping... Um, you know, they, they write up agreements on how they're going to do business or however that goes, and they don't keep those agreements. Um, but then there's the sin that America has done that really has God angry. And I don't care who's watching this and who don't like the truth. It's just going to have to be what it is. Um, but the, the sins that, some of the sins that America has created, uh, done is abortion, the murder is murdering of innocent blood, um, and 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 just the the lies the government tell to the people, and the 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 way that the government handles business for the people. God is ashamed, and He is angry, and He is furious at how we handle. And then the personal sins that we could, that we do in our personal lives. And then people are standing up, fighting for sin, mm -hmm. fighting to be wicked. And God is just, he's like, I didn't create you all for this. And so he's, he's like, he's standing 
in the distance. And the Bible says in Revelation that he's going to give out a great yell. A great, ah, it's going to be loud. It's going to shake the heavens and the earth when he does this. He is so not happy with where the earth is today. And it's just time. It's time for us to bow down and repent. Second Corinthians 7 and 14 says, I said Corinthians, I'm sorry, Chronicles, says that if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and turn from your wicked ways, he says, then and only then will he accept and receive and forgive your land but you got to humble yourself you got to see what you're doing does not please God this is not Chris and Dawn's hour this ain't our word we're coming from the holy scriptures and I know people don't want to hear it I know people are, are blind because the God of this world has blind your eyes he's dulled your ears and you're giving over to everything that the Satan, the deceiver, the deception that he's placed before you. We're feeding that. We're readily eating that and thinking it's the truth when it's really a lie. But we got we to gotta turn back to the God Almighty, the one who created the heavens and the earth and all the inhabitants of the earth. That's the true and living God. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, because while Dom was talking, while Dom was talking, I heard about mankind will fight against God. And that's something that the thing created will fight against its creator. It must know it can't win, but there must be I'm going to say like a brainwashing so that this created thing won't know that it don't stand a chance. But I want to read it. It says, it's in Revelation 17, 11, And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seven and goes into perdition. <clears throat> And the ten horns which you saw are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as of yet, but received power as kings, one hour with the beast. These have one mind, see, and shall give their power and strength to the beast. These shall make war with the lamb. And the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that are with him are called, chosen, and faithful. Isn't that something, though? You see little glimpses of things in the Word that shows, you know, how Satan is and how man agrees with this fallen um cherub you know the cherub that covers he has an anointing you know and people are overtaken by that anointing that covers and they uh, it's like a seduction took place and now they are one just like we're to be one with our god with his holy through his holy spirit Satan's copying that and here they gave their power and strength to him and look at to make war with, with God he he knows he can't win he has to know but isn't that something that man to even think he can overcome his God his creator you know and that's what's supposed to take place now The Bible says that the Lord Jesus says, whoever is not with him is against him. So that makes you an anti-Christ. The Lord was showing me that earlier. He, he said, 
there are many antichrists. And I, and I was just listening, and he said, he that is not with me is against me. That's anti-him. So if somebody said, I'm not an antichrist, well, ask yourself, are you with him? If you can't say yes quickly, you are an antichrist. You got to open his word. You got to really do as I did. I mean, I, I still be, I slips at times. I'm going to pull this over. Okay. Yeah, I wrote this book. What did Jesus say to do according to Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Revelations? Because of the words in red, like, out of fear and trembling, at least, yeah, at least I think the thing is backwards. So it'll be backwards for them. That's why I didn't hold it up too long. But I'm just making a point. At least I I had a trembling inside to say, man, what did he say to do? You know, because the Lord says not many will make it that hear these sayings of mine and, and don't do them. So I'm like, well, I'm going to at least search it out. What did you say to do? So I found all of the words where he said, do this, you know, it caused there to be action to it. At least I made an effort. And I know the Lord, look, he's looking at all of us. Like, they don't even fear me. They're not uh, trembling at my word. There's a scripture that says that, that we're to tremble at his word. But most don't, you know. And the other thing that most don't do is they don't follow the word wholeheartedly. I'll accept this part about the Bible, but that it was tampered with. Either you're going to believe the Bible is the truth or you're not. It's just as simple as that. If it was tampered with, God is going to deal with those who tampered with it. But until that day, we got to believe what God say and just obey it. And then... God will deal with those who have tampered with it if it ha has been done. So I'm not going to care for if someone did something wicked. I'm going to care about what that word say and does it line up to. Because you have the Holy Spirit or you should. And he is the spirit of truth who would discern whether that is the truth or not. And please believe everything that the word of God asks you to do. It's just right. Thou shall not kill your brother. Okay? That makes sense. Thou shall not lie. Do you have any trust if you lie? If I lie to you, will you believe me the next time? So it's like, judge the word based on what it's saying and if it be true or not. Everything the Bible asks us to do is of integrity. It's a level of integrity. It's a level of love. It's a level of peace and grace. It's a level of treating people the way you want to be treated. He said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. So if, if you can't see that that's not a good thing, then you just want to be a wicked person. I'm sorry. I'm not going to cover it up. I'm not going to put gravy or sugar or honey on it today. It is what it is. You want to kill babies in a womb? Can I walk up to you and shoot you in the head and say, I have a right to kill somebody simply because I don't like you. I don't like your hair color. I don't like your sexual orientation. I don't like that you don't serve the true and living God. So I have a right to bang, kill you. If I can say that, then I'm no better than the person who says that I have a choice. It's my body. I can kill a baby from the inception. No, you can't. The minute the sperm and the egg comes together, there's life being created through the almighty God. And that thing, be, it gets a heartbeat. It literally begins to get a, a pulsate. And it's a living creature. It's a living being. You cannot kill that baby. Quit calling it anything other than a baby. A human being like you. And if your life is valued, then every life should be valued. Even the life that's inside the womb. Amen. Amen. And the 
Lord God is the creator of that life. And as Don was talking, you know, I hear scriptures and that's the Lord talking. He talks through his word. His word is living. And what he led me to is Revelation 6 and 12 downward. And I'm going to see what he's going to say through the reading of this. And it says, And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal. John says, I saw when he opened the sixth seal. And lo, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair. And the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth as even as a fig tree cast her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind and the heaven departed as a scroll when it was rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places and the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every freeman hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. And they said to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that's sitting on the throne and from the wrath of that lamb, of the lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? See, these people knew nobody can stand. They knew that is here now there he is these people knew god was one day gonna strike yes they knew they that's why they're like telling the, the mountains and the rocks fall mm -hmm. on us mm -hmm. and hide us from him that's sitting on the throne but it says for the great day of his wrath has come see they knew about it that day has come See, instead of them prepping to do right and get on God's good side, they did not. Man is stout, you know. Let us not be that way. Anybody that's hearing this, wake up. Snap out of it. Shake yourself. You got to... We, we notice that when people are bound by some evil spirit that thing tries to mm -hmm. hold your tongue mm -hmm. for you not to speak to where you you actually need somebody to coach you in what to say and they can't even say jesus christ the nazarene they can't even say it jesus christ the nazarene they can't say the blood of jesus mm -hmm. We, 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 you know, the thing don't want to let you. It wants to arrest your thoughts, your mind. It says this, the, the uh, prince of the power of the air. Yeah, you can look up a scripture if the <laughs> Lord is speaking to you. Mm -hmm. The prince of the power of the air. It says the spirit that's working in the children of disobedience. It says the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that do not believe the gospel unless the light of the glorious gospel who is the image of Christ should shine unto them see it, it must penetrate into there but if it don't there's ultimate doom awaiting now I did tell my wife that we wasn't gonna be on long you know, we, we speak the word of God because it speaks for itself. These scriptures that's been used thus far is to show you that man knows he has a creator. He decides or she decides I'm against you. The nations were angry. What well, would you angry at God? You're angry at him for what? You know, think about it. Look at all the good things he gave us to enjoy. You know, we, me and Don often go to the park. And I'm like, look at this creation. The Lord will put 
ponds of water in different cities with the ducks and the wildlife and, and just that nice scenery. You can be on the boat in your pontoon, canoe, um, you name it, you know, and there's families laughing over there, you know, and just having a good time um, barbecuing and stuff. And just the Lord gave a variety of vegetables, fruits, meats, just a good God. He, he didn't let us go toward the sun to be scorched nor away from the sun to freeze over. You know, what a good God. You know, we, we, we go to bed, we wake up. Some people, they go to bed evil, wake up evil. Some people, they go to bed good, they wake up good, you know. But yet, God allowed that. But they just choose to be who they are. When at one moment you can stop and think what am i doing what am i doing you know the adversary i know one reason he's very upset as a as it says he hasn't having great wrath because yeah. he knows he has but a short time because he sees that we can repent mm -hmm. human man can repent when we mess up but he cannot he cannot and I know angels, they look at us like, can you believe these people? They, they've they been given so many chances and we were cast out. It's, it's over for us, you know? And I know that's why S Satan is just working overtime. It's to, he's trying to push the hand of God. But the scriptures already says that because, you know, iniquity shall abound the love of many will grow cold but it, it says that god will shorten the days for the elect's sake or else no flesh will be saved it, it's going to get so bad he's going to shorten the days for the elect's sake will he do that now for hope only thing i can tell you all is turn to uh psalms 91 I did have like a little teaching where it, it, it's called dissecting Psalms 91 because there's a lot in it. Like for instance, and I always put she in there because it'll say he, it always says he, but I'll say he or she that continues to dwell because dwelleth means continue. Whenever you see ETH, it means continue. He or she that continues to dwell in the secret place of the Most High. You can find out about this secret place in Job chapter 28 verses 7 and 8. And it says there's a path which no foul bird knows. And which the vulture's eye has not seen. The lion's whelp have not trodden it. And lion's whelp means his offspring. He haven't even trotten this path, nor the fierce lion, and that represents Satan, because I just, it just came out of my mouth, he, as a roaring lion, he, he's mad, the fierce lion hadn't passed by it, that's found in Job, that's that secret uh, place, the Lord has a secret place of the Most High, Matthew 6 and 18 says your father which is in secret see emphasis on it, you got to continue to dwell not visit see in that in psalms 91 say he that continues to dwell there don't not visit stay there the secret uh wait yeah in the secret place though. yeah in the secret place emphasis on continue to dwell not visit now john eight thirty five says the servant doesn't abide or continue to abide in the house forever but the son continues to abide forever so the these scriptures giving key like answers like to what god is looking for he's looking for sons sons stay in the house they abide if you just a servant you can be serving the lord and not many servants will make it god is looking for sons romans eight fourteen. for as many 
as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. See? So, and daughters. Yeah, and daughters. Thank you, babe. So that's the answer. You want to be led by his Holy Spirit, which proves you are his son, and you abide in the house in that secret place. Now, And you will live under the shadow of the Almighty, the defender or protection of the Almighty. Job 1 and 10, this is what Satan says. You made a hedge of protection, restraint, a fence about him, Job, and about his house and about all that he has on every side. The, the rest of Psalms 91 says, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and him will I trust. Proverbs 1, 18, 8 and 9. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes, you know, rulers. Surely... He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. And that's a trapper, one who sets bait or, you know, to catch birds. And he will deliver you from the noisome pestilence. You know what pestilence is. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings shall you trust. The Lord spoke of that when he said, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem who murders the prophets and stone to death those messengers who are sent to her, to you, by God. How often I wanted to gather your children together around me as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were unwilling. There's, that's a message for a lot of people out there, too. You are unwilling. The Lord reaches his hand out, but nobody reaches theirs toward him. As the scripture says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. He says a lot of us is just unwilling. His truth, it says, shall, shall be your shield and buckler. A lot of people reject his truth. So how do you have a shield? or a buckler a shield a buckler is a shield worn on your left arm smaller it's small and round it's a little small round shield mm -hmm. Ephesians 6:16 6, above all taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked that's words too mm -hmm. It's all about words. The world was framed by words, by the word of God. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor for the arrow that continues to fly by day, nor for the pestilence that continues to walk in darkness, nor for the destruction that continues to waste at noonday. A thousand shall fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. You know, think about it. The Lord said, we're, we're going to see some stuff happening. As it says, only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. So when you do see people dying all around, they're paying for their forefathers' sins or somebody. The wages of sin is death, y'all for death yes and that's what you're seeing but he that continues to dwell in the secret place of the most high you see you're gonna have his protection like what satan saw with job only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked for it is written behold the lord continues to come out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall reveal 
the innocent blood shed upon her and will no longer cover her slain. That's Isaiah 26, 21, Amplified Bible. Because the Lord says you have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, your habitation. See, he, he's got to be your habitation where you live in him. You had Psalms 91, Ben? No. Yeah, turn to Psalms 91. And, yeah. It's, see the OT at the bottom? Yeah. It says, Because you have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, your habitation, there shall no evil befall you. So, if he's not your habitation, expect evil to befall you according to Psalms 91. But if he is your refuge and your habitation, there shall no evil befall you. Neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he will give his angels, what does it say, babe? Charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you up in their hands, least you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shall thou trample up underfoot or under feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. I mean, you would have to pay somebody to mess that up, but I'm going to tell you, you all, it's up to you. You got to seek the Lord your creator he made you and you was you were not an accident so the lord did say seek and you will find knock and the door will be open ask and you shall receive you know you know one day i went out and looked at the stars like out here where we live is less light pollution you can see them and and it's a, it's amazing if you all ever did that you looked up and you're like wow wow I'm just so tiny you know if you guys think about it we're tiny and and pray to him he's watching you 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 looking up at all his creation and he he hears you he can hear you and one day I told him that I said I know you can hear me because you are God. And I asked them to show me the truth because there's so many different titles of churches. I'm like, which one? It's not just this one, right? It's not just this one name, go there. No, it's many names. And I'm like, well, which one is the right one? I'm going to join it. And I asked them to show me which one it is. And I said, if I die and go to hell, you know, basically before I find it, it's your fault. Because I have humbly asked you this day. I was ready. I was in the seeking process. So I want you all to do the same. Seek him now while he can be found. Call on him. Call on him while he is near. That scripture says that proving that it's a time he won't be near. There's a time he won't be found. He, Your voice will not be heard. He will not come to your rescue you know how it is when, when when we're in trouble we want help we're calling on the lord now we want to call help me help me help me help me i mean who wouldn't ask for help who wouldn't ask for a drop of water in a dry place you know if i oh if i could just have this it's too late it's too late and you all know what i'm saying is true don't wait till that happens just Seek him. Turn, the Bible says, turn, let the wicked man forsake his thoughts. See, yes. 
and turn to the Lord, and He will be found of you. We, we want to now take the time to invite, you're going to read that, Chris, um, you all to know this Lord Jesus that we're talking about. Um, we don't normally do our open invitation, but the Lord has shown me, Chris, a way to invite souls to the altar. And you have to confess him. You have to believe that he is God and that he did pay for your sins with his life and that his blood paid for that sin. And so we're going to read a little bit of the passage of scripture and you're going to have to say in your heart, open your mouth and say, I believe that Jesus is the son of God and that he is God. You're going to have to say it with your own mouth. See, a lot of times people walk people with through a confession to say that they believe. But you're about to hear a story. And in the story, exactly. Jesus, Jesus asked the young lady, do you believe I'm the resurrection? He said, I am the resurrection. So you got to believe. And if you don't believe, nobody can help you. Go ahead, Chris. Yeah, we we hadn't too long ministered to someone. It was the Lord through us, and me and Don was like, through our own selves, saw what God was doing with these individuals, and 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 I knew about it, but I'm like, wow, this needs to be incorporated. This needs to be done by uh, 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 all ministers all churches because the Lord he recorded certain words and, and different events for a reason he didn't just record this just so you would just listen to it and be like wow ooh, what a story but let me read John chapter 11 starting at verse 1 and the Lord will stop and explain what it is he wanted us all to see you know it says now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. And it was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. When Jesus heard that he said this sickness is not unto death but for the glory of God and that the Son of God might be glorified thereby now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus when he had heard therefore that he was sick he abode two days still in the same place where he was then after that he says to his disciples, let us go into Judea again. His disciples say unto him, Master, the Jews of, of late sought to stone you, and you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbles not, because he sees the light of this world. But... If a man walk in the night, he stumbles because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he said unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleep, he's sleeping, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spoke of his death. But they thought he had spoken of taking rest and sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead, okay? And I'm glad for your sakes that he's dead. That I was not there. That's what the Lord said. I'm glad I wasn't there. To the intent you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. I want to find it because that's a lot to read. You want to go to the part where yeah. 
When he arrived. Yeah. And then there's a story being told here, and you guys need to just read it for yourself because we have mm -hmm. skipped down to a part that you really need to understand. Now, Lazarus, we know up till now, he's died, and Jesus is on his way to the town where Mary and Martha is. They're grieving his death. Go ahead, Chris. It says, Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him, but Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever you will ask of God, God will give it to you. Jesus said unto her, Your brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. Hallelujah. He that believeth in me, not on me, but in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever continues to live and continues to believe in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said unto him, Yes, Lord. She said unto him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And when she had so said, she went her way and called Mary her sister secretly, saying, The Master has come and calls for you. Now, this portion here, Jesus, he asked a question. It's in words in red right there. You see it, Don? Oh, I see it. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever continues to live and continues to believe in me shall never die. Do you all believe this? This is what I had to ask a couple. I asked them this question. The Lord asked them, do you all believe this? It's a question mark. And she had to say something. Martha had to say something. She couldn't do like this shake see through that confession she got married to the Lord just always use me and Don as an example the Bible says uh, marriage is honorable the bed is undefiled but whoremongers and adulterers God will judge the marriage bed is undefiled guess what happened to get it that way what what Don? At first, confession I really, of I, faith, a confession and love. of faith and love, and at first, it, even for the bedroom of a of a married couple, male and female, to be not defiled, they first would have had to confess the Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. as the resurrection, the truth, and the life, and that He is God. And so, if you don't do that confession, then when me and Chris came to the altar, we still would have been living in sin. Mm. But because we, we, we made a confession before they even coming to our own altar to be married to one another, we first married Christ. And that's how you come to the marriage covenant. You first married to Christ. You can't be married to somebody without first being married to Christ. And I would submit to the whole world. I might get stoned for this one. That nobody is truly married unless they're in Christ. You just did some type of ceremony. Looks good on the outside. But it ain't worth a heel of beans. That's why people get divorced. Because they don't really, really believe in the true and living God. He said marriage. There's no divorce in marriage. God said that when he marries us. He's married to the backslider. In other words, if you go out and mess up. God didn't divorce you. He'd say, I'll go to hell. That's not how God is. 
But in this marriage covenant, you first must be married to Jesus Christ. Then, if God bring you together with husband and wife, male and female, then it's legal in heaven. Any other marriage is not valid in heaven. Sorry, I didn't write the word. God wrote the word. Now, you might want to stone me, but really you're mad at the word of God. And I'm okay with it. See, a lot of people ain't willing to die for what they believe. But I'm at the point now, I believe in the word of God. And I believe so much so that I'm willing to give my life for it. This thing is, is the truth. And, and most people just want some facts. And facts change. But the truth is the word of God. It's been established. Before we even got here, the word of God was established. And the world and its system is built on the word of God. The laws that is in place are laws that's in heaven. So, I, you know, I, I don't have an argument for the word. If I don't do it, it's just because I simply didn't want to do it. But I'm not going to say God is not God because I didn't want to do it. Go ahead, Chris. So, as you all had that moment of silence, just so you can see the pause, reflect on what you just heard. But is it, this is all truth. This is all truth. You know, we're big on teaching. The Lord said education, education. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. But it says we because they rejected the knowledge he said I will reject you so don't reject this knowledge and this is the truth you know we, it, our conscience is good we, we're we married just because of the truth in our hearts the love you know the bible says you know if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord see Lord she said Lord I believe Mm -hmm. That you are the Christ, the Son of God, which yes. should come into the world. Simple as that. He asked her a question, and he was waiting on an answer. And look, the, even the thief on the cross, he just came across my mind. One of them said, Lord, when you enter into your kingdom, remember me. See, he said, Lord, means master, owner. Ruler. Ruler. Ruler, you know, I'm yours, basically. You, that's what you're saying. I belong to you. I will follow you er, wherever you go. I want to be there. I'm your humble sheep. But I'm telling you, whoever this is for, receive this. Receive this. Pass this to somebody. I mean, we don't, we're not trying to be famous people. We're not trying to get followers, hits, and likes. It's just... This is just what this life entails. The gospel got to you. Whoever seeing this, it got to you. The Bible says, whereby it was preached unto all the earth. Every, every creature has heard it. But I just pray that you all do the right thing with what you heard. It's simple. Believe on the Lord Jesus and you shall be saved. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You do have to repent. You have to put away that which you were doing that God's spirit will bring to you that's not right. He will show you that thing that you are doing is not right. You have to put it away from you. Repent and believe his word. You got to get in his word. And he and make him Lord where you follow him and look at his example, imitate him. Let us pray. Blessed Father, thank you for this day which you have made for us to rejoice and be glad therein. I know you gave us this day, this opportunity, this time, Lord, this recording 
I pray, Father, it reaches many. Let your your presence be with it. Let your anointing be with it, Father. Uh, let, if it be but just that one, Lord, whereby you said the angels will rejoice in heaven over one that truly repents, Lord, and only you know who truly <clears throat> repents and give their life to you, Lord. Show them, Lord, how feeble this life is and just show them the, your plan, your uh, what you call your righteous cause, Lord. And you will bless them that favor your righteous cause, Lord. This is your righteous cause. It's through a choice, Lord. You said, by our words will be we be justified, made righteous, innocent in your sight. By our words we will be justified. And by our words we will be condemned. So, Lord, I just pray they will take this serious and see that this is the day of their visitation because they're watching this. And I pray they will share it, Lord. And I pray they will be saved as we are saved. They will be sure and they will serve. Be saved, sure, and serving, O oh Lord. And we call you, Lord. But you said, why call me that and don't do what I say? So I said, well, what did you say to do? So therefore, I pray they will go on a search also. And and just cut the world off, Lord. Show them. Don't show them, Lord. Don't just repent because I'm scared of something that's coming or I think that was going to happen and and then when it don't happen, Lord, don't let them do that to you. Don't let them be a people who say, I'm going to run to the Lord because I'm thinking something bad is going to happen. And then when it don't happen, they go right back to the vomit and the filth and the way that they were. But let it be for eternity, Lord. Let it not be just to escape this life, but let it be an eternal change, Lord. Do a mighty work in them by your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, be with this, your word. Your word is spirit and life. You dwell with the word. Thank you, Lord. Keep me and Don by the vessels that you are using that this word should go through, Lord. Secure us into your heavenly kingdom, Lord. Don't cast us away from your presence, Lord. And don't take your Holy Spirit away. Create in us a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within us, Lord God. Order our steps in your word and don't let sin have dominion over us, Lord God. We appreciate you. We love you. We thank you. We bless you. We bless your people. The Lord bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you all. The Lord lift his face, his countenance of upon you all and give you peace and now unto him who is able to keep you all from falling and to present you all faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God be glory majesty dominion and power from this time forth this day even forevermore to the only wise God our Savior in Jesus name and in his blood do we seal this message Everyone who agree, amen. Amen. Have a song. Can you hand me the bongos? I'll lead out with this song. And this is a, a song of joy and a song of praise and a song of gladness. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, hallelujah, this is the day that the We will rejoice for he has made. 